So our next topic for MySQL is aliases. Now I'm using the same data that I have in the two previous videos. So this is your first one that you're watching and you want to have the exact same data as me in your database. Um, this is the link that I've got down in the description for the SQL command that's going to create the two tables, genres and movies. And it's also going to put in all the data and set up all the, the keys and everything. So once you've downloaded that zip file, Right here, you can download the zip, you can expand it, and then get the SQL file from inside of that. Um, create a database in PHP My Admin called Movies, or call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter if it's the same name. Um, and then go to the Import tab and click on Choose File. Choose the one that you've downloaded, the SQL file, and then click Go down here at the bottom. And that will create these two tables, Genres and Movies. Okay. So what we want to talk about today is aliasing. Now we have a table called movies and we've got columns called movie ID, movie title, director, year, genre ID. So these are the names that we've defined as we built the database. But sometimes you end up with column names that have been properly defined. They've got really long names. You want to have good descriptive names. Now, I've kept mine fairly short here just because it's a simple example, but technically I should have written movie director and movie year or release year, year released, something like that. You want to have titles for your columns that there's no question about what the data is inside of them. Now I've kept mine fairly short, but that doesn't mean that I can't alias them. I can come up with nicknames for both my table as well as for my columns. And this becomes really useful as your queries start to become really large. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here to make it easier for you to read. Now, because I selected my table before I went to the SQL tab here, uh, or the browse tab, we have here around the name of my table movies, there's back tick characters. These are not single quotes. So if I put a single quote, or double quote, you can see the difference. These backtick characters are special characters inside of SQL. When you have a name that could potentially have spaces in it, like movie space title, it's a bad practice, don't do it. But if you ever come across a database or a table or a column that has a name with a space in it, this is the way that you can avoid problems in your SQL. You can put back tick characters around any of the names that are defined here. Okay. Now with aliasing, we're coming up with nicknames. So in my from clause, where I've got the table defined movies, I can say as M. This is going to be the nickname and it's only going to be the nickname inside this query while this query is running. It doesn't get saved. It's not renaming the table or anything. It's just a nickname for my query. If you're doing a lot of SQL statements, this is going to save you time because if I wanted to have, let's say two of the columns here, I can say M dot movie title comma M dot director. And this is where we are putting in the alias. So without the alias, when you've got one table that you're working with, this isn't necessary. When you've got multiple tables, there's a chance that you're going to have column names that are the same thing. Like here, I've got a column called genre ID. Over in the genres table, I also have a column called genre ID. I can come over to the side here and you can look at them. Here's genre ID inside of movies and inside of genres, columns. There's also a column called genre ID. So if I was trying to talk to these two tables at the same time in the same query, they have the same column name. I couldn't put both of them here without specifying which table I'm talking about. So I would have to say not just genre ID, but it's the one that's inside the movies table that I want to specify. So movies.genre ID. Now again, if I'm only dealing with one table, this isn't an issue. It's when you start to have multiple tables that you need to do this. When it's one table, it's just about saving yourself some time. So as M 
Now I can call it anything I want. It could be like that, but one character is going to save you a lot more time than typing a whole bunch of M's. So there we go. There's my columns, and here's this. If I run it, now we'll see here, movie title, director, genre ID, those are the three columns I've selected. Everything worked just fine. It hasn't renamed the table or anything, but I can also rename these. We can use as title, as der, as genre. So now I've created aliases for these three. Run go, there we go. Now here's the new labels, title, der, and genre. Those are now my new column headings. And if you're using PHP or Node or some other language to um, retrieve this, to run this query and get the data back, these aliases, title, der, genre, those are the names that PHP or Node are going to see as the names for the columns. They're not going to think it's m.director. They're going to think this is the name. That's what I'm going to use. So it's going to save you time in your other programming as well if you use aliases. Now, using aliases here is not going to, um, for the columns, is not going to work down inside of your other things like your where or your order by. We still have to use the proper name, but if you've got an alias for the table, well, then you should have it in front of here. So we can say where m dot movie title like, okay, let's see if the letter N is inside of it. We'll do that. Oh, and this should be double quotes, sorry. So we want to use the original name, not the table uh, sorry, not the column alias, but the actual column name. And here I can put either movies or M. So either one of these will work for the table, but for the column, it has to be the actual name, not the alias name. There we go. So here's all the movies with an N inside the, the title of the movie. Okay, and that's aliasing. It's as simple as that. It's coming up with nicknames to make things a little bit more efficient, to let you rename things for when they're fed into your other programming, and it will save you time for your tables if you're writing really big queries, and these queries can get quite large over time. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, I will leave a link to that SQL file that you can download and follow along with this. And as always, thanks for watching.